Hello, my name is Benjamin Gobi, and as my project, the BTG interviews, I'm interviewing actors today. This is my third interview. Today, I'm interviewing Simon Fisher Becker. When and where were you born, and where did you grow up as a child? Right, I was born in Paddington General Hospital, which is in London, okay, and is now a car park. Wow. And I was brought up in northwest London, a place called Ricelip. Uh, and, and that's it, really. <laughs> Question two, when did you start acting and what inspired you? Um, my first experience as an actor was actually at school. Um, I actually was more of a musician. I played the clarinet. I played in a school band and orchestra. And the music department uh, sort of merged with the drama department to put on a production of Oliver. And I was informed that I was to play Mr. Bumble. Ah, you see, so... Because, I was talking to the first well, person about Oliver Twist. Yes, well, there you go. And so, that, so that's where I got the taste for it, but I didn't seriously really consider becoming a professional actor until I was made redundant from my first job. And with that money, I, I did a postgraduate drama course, and then uh, you know, led on from there. Question number three. Did you have any other jobs before acting, and are there any other jobs you'd like to try? Yes, um, uh, uh, my, the job I was first made redundant from was the civil service. Although in those days they didn't call it redundancy, but you ended up going with a bag of money, you know, in your hand. Uh, and then uh, during, then during performance, uh, 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 during uh, uh, my drama course, and also for a few years after, I did other jobs. I was a deputy theatre manager, an HR manager. Uh, as well as stacking shelves at Sainsbury's. Wow. Yeah. So I did uh, uh, temp, whatever temp work came along, I just took it. Question four, what's your favourite TV show and film you've worked, that you have worked on? Uh, my answer to that question is always the, the next job. And uh, because uh, as a jobbing actor, you just look forward to your next job. Uh, but I love working and uh, uh, I cannot think of a job where I thought, Thank God it's the last day. You feel this? Yeah. Question five. What would you say is the most challenging TV show or film that you've worked on? Challenging. It depends what the challenge is. Because each job has its own challenges. Uh, uh, so, for example, with Harry Potter, the challenge was to get over my fear of heights. Because uh, being one of the ghosts, we were suspended 20 feet up in the air. So that was that challenge. Your attention, please. Let the feast begin. A witch. Bit of a nasty shock for him when he found out. Say, Percy, who's that teacher talking to Professor Quirrell? Oh, that's Professor Snape, head of Slytherin House. What's he teach? Potions. But everyone knows it's the dark arts he fancies. He's been after Quirrell's job for years. Ah! Hello! How are you? Welcome to Gryffindor. Sir Nicholas, have a nice summer. Dismal. Once again, my request to join the headless hunt has been denied. I know you. You're nearly headless, Nick. I prefer Sir Nicholas, if you don't mind. Nearly headless? How can you be nearly headless? Like this. And for Doctor Who, it was just being a head in a box. Um, you know, how to get over the emotion and everything with just my face. Doctor. Yes, I remember that one.
What's so dangerous about my future? On the fields of Trenzalore, at the fall of the 11th, when no living creature can speak falsely or fail to answer, a question will be asked. A question that must never, ever be answered. Silence will fall when the question is asked. Silence must fall would be a better translation. The silence are determined that the question will never be answered, that the Doctor will never reach Trenzalore. I don't understand. What's it got to do with me? The first question. The oldest question in the universe hidden in plain sight. Would you like to know what it is? Yes. Are you sure? Very, very sure. Of course. Then I shall tell you. But on your own head, be it. <laughs> it's not my fault. Put me back. And now, a fool like those. I've got Wi-Fi here, I'm bored already, and my nose is hurting. We all have to die, Doctor. But you more than most. You do see that, don't you? You know what the question is now. You do see that you have to die. Question six. What is your favourite role you have played, and are there any other roles you'd like to play? Uh, the favourite thing I've, I have to say, um, um, a friend of mine wrote a play for me, a one-man play, called Hamlet, Tragedy of a Fat Man. It was the first time I'd ever done anything like it. It was terrifying, but I got through it and I didn't die. So that's good. That's, uh, and what was the other part of that question? What would, my, what would I like to play? Yeah. Uh, there are so many things we haven't got time to list it, but I always look forward to my next job. That's good, then. Yeah. Question number seven, which actors and actresses have you enjoyed working with and are there any you'd like to work with in the future? Uh, and for obvious reasons, I would like to work with Jodie Whittaker. But uh, uh, all the actors I've worked with, I've been, I've been very, very fortunate that uh, I would say most, because there might be that I can't think of, but most of the actors I've got to work with, especially the bigger names, have been utterly delightful and very kind I wouldn't be where I am today without the, without the kindness of those people. Did you enjoy working with Matt Smith and Dr. Hayden? Oh, Matt Smith, definitely. I mean, people ask me who my favourite doctor is, and I always say Patrick Troughton, because I remember Hartnell changing to Troughton. But of course, Matt Smith became my special doctor, because mm -hmm. I got to work with him. And he is, and he probably be upset if I tell everybody this, but I think deep down he's actually quite a shy person. But once he gets to know you, he can be very cheeky, talk a lot about football. Uh, 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 but as an actor, he, for me, he was very generous and very kind and helped me do my head in the box. I had a question in two from him. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a shame because he's a very good actor. Yeah. Um, question eight. Do you listen to any music? And if so, what sort of music? All sorts of music. Uh, um, naturally, I tend to go for classic FM on the radio, but I also like, well, it's not so going so much now, but it was jazz FM. Uh, and basically, I like get anything from uh, Beethoven to B.B. King, Elvis Presley. But, uh, and um, uh, I like listening to some of, some of the very new stuff, because I can appreciate if it might not necessarily be my style, I can appreciate something that is good in its own genre. So, I go for anything really. I'm the same, I yeah. listen to all sorts of music. Yeah. Question nine, which directors have you enjoyed working with and are there any you'd like to work with in the future? Yeah, I've, I've made a vow never to name the names I like to work with because then the ones I haven't named get upset. I see. So, but, but I have to say, most of the directors I've worked with have been very good. I have been uh, uh, surprised a couple of times only that some directors don't have the ability to communicate easily. Ah. They'll start trying to explain, and it is very co confusing, and then they end it up by ending the instruction uh, with, well, you know what I mean. Okay. Of course, you have no idea, because they've just spoken gibberish. 
but most directors, and uh, particularly directors who were actors, are really good directors because they know what the actor needs to hear mm -hmm. and how to be instructed and directed. A similar question. Which writers and authors have you enjoyed working with and are there any you'd like to work with? I like working with new talent and I like to encourage, and I'm in a privileged position now, that a lot of the new writers think having my name associated with a project will help. Well, whether it does or not, I don't know, but I'm very intrigued in what their imagination is bringing along. So I always say, if I'm given the choice, let's do something new. Question 11, do you have a favourite book or book series and who is your favourite author? Um, uh, that, that, that is more difficult because uh, I tend to, this makes me going to sound very boring, I tend to like technical books. I'm not okay. really, yes, I'm not really into novels and Jane Eyre and things like that, that's not my kind of thing. But I do like sci-fi. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke is an obvious choice, but there are others as well. Uh, but I tend to, uh, as a social reading, I prefer to read up a, a, something like science, maybe a, a, an autobiography, um, uh, and something technical. I don't know why, but that intrigues me. Question 12. How, how often do you travel and what types of travel do you use? Uh, I travel every week, uh, either to a convention or for filming or for recording. Uh, I very rarely travel for holiday. I'm in the privileged position now that I'm uh, invited to all sorts of places all over the world, in which case I fly. And I've also done a couple of cruises. Wow. Yeah, but, but it's mostly work oriented. Mostly work orientated, I have to insist. I wouldn't like to suggest that I'm just enjoying myself. Uh, but whatever mode of transport, it can be very tiring. Do you enjoy playing any sports? If so, what sports games do you like to play? I used to play rugby. Okay. Uh, I was a hooker. Uh, and I used to enjoy badminton and I used to go swimming a lot. Uh, but. Uh, uh, I've had to curtail that since we, uh, I was attacked and I've got a damaged spine. So I do try and swim, but I can't possibly play rugby anymore. Um, but, uh, but I do enjoy watching sport and I do enjoy athletics, watching again. Uh, um, uh, but I would also uh, acknowledge I'm not a natural sport. Question 14. As an actor, how do you feel your career has adapted over the years and which areas of acting do you feel you need to improve? Well, actually, I completely the other way around. Um, I was always considered the comic. I was often given comic roles or comedically buffoonish roles. Until one time, I was offered something quite dramatic and found that I could do it equally well. So the answer to that is I just like to do a whole variety of work uh, and I can, and Dorium and Doctor Who has proven that I'm actually quite versatile because Dorium can be very funny but also extremely sinister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I hope that's answered that one. Who's carrying me? I demand to know. I'm ahead, I have rights. I want my doors open this time. I demand that my doors are open. Is it you? It is, isn't it? It is you. I can sense it. But how did you do it? How could you have possibly escaped? Is there nothing else we can do? Actually, thinking about it, Look into my eye. <laughs> the Tessalector. A doctor in a doctor's suit. Time said I had to be on that beach, so I dressed for the occasion. Barely got singed in that boat. 
So you're going to do this? Let them all think you're dead? It's the only way, then they can all forget me. I got too big, Dorian, too noisy. Time to step back into the shadows. And Dr. Song? In prison all her days? Her days, yes, her nights. Well, that's between her and me, eh? So many secrets, Doctor. <laughs> I'll help you keep them, of course. Well, you're not exactly going anywhere, are you? But you're a fool, nonetheless. It's all still waiting for you. The fields of Trenzalore, the fall of the Eleventh, and the question. Goodbye, Dorian. The first question. The question that must never be answered. Hidden in plain sight. The question you've been running from all your life. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. And the last question, have you enjoyed this interview today and what advice would you give me for future, my future jobs as a film director and actor? Right, uh, okay, as a film director, keep your instructions short and sweet. And I would say that also to any writers. Uh, for an actor to have just two or three lines. For example, Dorian, large blue man, think Sydney Green Street. Simple instruction. Very well. Sometimes you get a whole history of the character and you have yeah. no idea what's going on at all. Um, uh, as an interviewer, it's nice to have a list of questions. But it would, have, it would also be interesting to develop a style where we're just having a chat. Yes. Yeah. I did that with the uh, first actor, because yeah. we've not got a lot of time left yeah. on the camera. Yeah. Um, if we had a lot of time on the camera and yourself had a lot of time, I would have asked you... Oh, more, yeah. And, more and, more and just have, have a, ch a chat. Uh, because we get to ask to do this sort of thing quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you were very good. You did listen to my... You gave me time to answer and you listened. But sometimes uh, the interviewer just has his or her questions and totally ignores what your answer is. Whereas sometimes an answer can lead on to a second question. That's what I was doing with the first and actor. Yeah. I was, um, we, were, we actually had a discussion yeah. after the questions and we... But it's good that you've prepared and you've also asked a lot of questions that I've not been asked before. So that's why I was slightly hesitant with my answers. Yeah. But well done. Thank you very much. So, really thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with you.